what is up YouTube in this video I'm gonna show a very high level on uh, AWS SageMaker so this video is gonna be like uh, covering all the basic topics uh, around the SageMaker uh, like under 10 minutes so we, I'm gonna try to cover like as much as possible but more of a high level overview so uh, just before I get started I really want to thank you thanks to all my subscriber uh, thanks a lot for subscribing. I finally reached the 50 subscriber mark. Uh, really excited to move forward. So let's just get started with the video. So basically, it, it, Amazon SageMaker is like a platform uh, which kind of allows you, uh, allows your machine learning workflow to be in like one place. So it allows you like to prepare the data set, build, train, and deploy high quality models. And basically around uh, at the same place. That's the idea. So. Uh, so you can consider Amazon SageMaker as like a big umbrella uh, and under this big umbrella of uh, SageMaker that comes on comes multiple services and which allows you to uh, manage your machine learning workflow in a single place and kind of uh, take uh, the most out of uh, all the capabilities that AWS is kind of providing. It has uh, multiple moving parts. Uh, we're going to discuss it in detail. So moving on uh, to the definition I just pulled out was Basically, this was uh, launched around 2017, and it's like a fully managed sub service that kind of decouples uh, your environment across like prepare preparation of the data, then training, training at scale, and then finally then deploying uh, towards an endpoint which can be used uh, in near real time. There are many advantages to using SageMaker. So the main the main advantages like I would want to discuss is uh, it kind of uh, enhances the capabilities of actual machine learning project. Uh, reduces the cost because everything kind of exists in the same place. You don't have to spend a lot of money in terms of uh, having a lot of people to just first build the environment. It kind of exists in a single place and then it allows you to train them at scale and deploy it. Let's see quickly what kind of services exist under the umbrella. So uh, there are like four main parts to it. Uh, let's go through it like one by one. The first one is like prepare. So which kind of allows you to prepare your data set uh, in place. So uh, they've got uh, everything kind of integrated in one place, which is the best part. So basically, uh, under ground truth, which is the first thing I wanted to discuss here under prepare, is it kind of allows you prepare your data set. So what you're gonna you can do is kind of create labeling jobs, and under the labeling jobs, you go there. Once you click on it, you provide a data set, create a job name, and then the location and whatever. But then you can ask uh, what kind of uh, thing you are looking for, what kind of job you're looking for in, in terms of the training job. So basically then there are like different four options, the classification, uh, two classification option, bounding box problem, semantic segmentation, which is kind of useful in uh, self-driving cars and label verification, something like that. So once you submit this request uh, under labeling job, it, it sends a request to the Amazon Turk workforce. Basically it's like a crowdsource workforce which helps people which are working in this team and then you can hire them and they kind of help you label the data. So it kind of exists in both part where you can help get and help in terms of labeling the data when you're trying something from scratch and then you have like a labeled data set in place. Uh, so which is like a, a very interesting thing to have uh, right at your fingertips. Moving on to the next part which is build. Uh, so this kind of covers all the services uh, which allows you to uh, kind of develop uh, the model use the data set, clean the data set, and kind of build your own model, uh, experiment with uh, all the Python packages, Python libraries, uh, in terms of like using Jupyter Notebooks. So something around that where like a lot of data scientists and data engineers use. Moving on to the uh, actual uh, console. Uh, under the console, if you go to the notebook, uh, that's the next step, you kind of create a notebook instance, okay? So once you click on notebook instances, it's gonna show you uh, all the notebook instances that exist. So you can click on create a notebook instance, give it a name, uh, so after you give it a name, you can select the type of instance you want. Uh, it ranges from like a very small instance uh, to like a very large instance like uh, ML M524X large. I, I, I will attach the details of uh, these configurations uh, uh, under the description. But uh, just to add on, uh, you can select the medium instance for now, which is kind of enough. And uh, the volume size is 5 gigs, which is enough. The next step is to uh, choose the IAM role. I can use the default role which I created. Uh, it's usually created by uh, one of the admins and then you can just use whatever is there. Uh, and the next step is just to click on create notebook. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Create a notebook instance. 
So this kind of allows me to create one of my own notebook instance and it, it's going to take some time, but after it gets created, um, you just click on one of the icons here and it, it opens the Jupyter lab uh, where everyone should be comfortable in using, right? And um, one more thing, uh, with these kind of notebooks, uh, the idea is uh, the developer who's uh, gonna use it, uh, is gonna create a no notebook under his or her name, and then you can just always stop uh, when you're done with creating the notebook. All right, I, I just created uh, this notebook instance. Experience is gonna be very similar to a regular Jupyter Lab instance. You will have a link, you just go there and it opens up a notebook. One, one thing to point out, uh, uh, the central to all of this would be like an S3 bucket where like an NST, uh, you're gonna get the inputs, like you put all, like after pre-processing, you're gonna put the data there. And then uh, outputs are also gonna be placed, like as a model would be placed outside these notebook into a center place in a, a S3 bucket, that's it. The notebook environments would range from like, uh, it already is like configured from different environments. So it's gonna range from like a, starting with the basic uh, Python environment from Conda to like uh, TensorFlow or a PyTorch or even with like Spark. After the notebooks, the next thing uh, would be the pre-processing jobs uh, and then, they, then there's a tab for it. So basically this kind of allows you create uh, pre-processing jobs where, which you can like scale over a cluster of machines. So uh, it, it is gonna be run over like a distributed cluster and you can define what kind of instances are there and like the number of instances. And then you can like uh, send uh, an entry point of the app which runs your job. And the uh, input would your, be your data from the S3 bucket as I pointed out like the central to this would be an S3 bucket. And the output would be uh, also onto an S3 bucket. So you can just go there and if you wanna do things at scale, uh, it's not important for like small jobs, small tasks or small data set. But definitely if you have a, a huge data set, you can just use this and uh, leverage this one. Moving on to the next part, which is train and tune your model. So basically there are like a few parts into it. Uh, the first one is like you, you can create your, like, your own algorithm. Uh, so basically this kind of allows you uh, to create like uh, your algorithm from scratch uh, for your data set. Uh, we'll not go into details here, probably later. But then the main part of this is like uh, creating a training job. So basically you got this uh, algorithm in place, uh, preferably like an existing algorithm in most of the cases, that's, uh, that's the key. And you kind of click on create a training job, give it a job name, the right IAM role. Uh, then uh, what it does, basically you start a job, it kind of creates a, a distributed cluster on its own and performs the training and then ends up saving the result of the training as a model into a S3 bucket. So basically scaling up everything uh, with a click of few buttons and uh, a few configurations, that's it. So uh, there's a lot of options to choose from. You can de detect the, what kind of model algorithm you wanna use and it kind of uh, uh, is already loaded with a few useful algorithms like k-means clusters, object to vec, PCA, and, and uh, like random followers, XGBoost, image classification, object detection, and you can just select, select your database or you can always use the algorithm you created. I, I still don't have experience with that, but I mainly use uh, uh, an existing uh, algorithm. The next thing is you need to decide on the resources you wanna give to this training job. You can give the number of instances, uh, the type of instances, and uh, then deciding a few more parameters, uh, like hyperparameters, we'll not go into there, but yeah, that's uh, the option it kind of gives you to do. And uh, the last two options is like giving your input, input to the data. So this would be basically an S3 path of the data. And then you can always store the output plus the kind of checkpoints so the in-between checkpoints. After the model has been trained, it generates checkpoints, it's kind of gonna save it to this path. So after you do that, you can just click on create jobs and it kind of uh, starts uh, training your model at scale. Uh, it, it's, uh, so it would be best if you like kind of play around with it, with it because uh, that would be more optimal uh, and see like what kind of configuration suits you, what kind of things suit you. And you would know uh, more of it when you have a specific data set around your training of the job. So that's it on uh, in terms of training. Um, then if we move on, the next part uh, is kind of the inference. So basically as a part of your inference, uh, what you're gonna do, you're gonna create an uh, endpoint configuration and in that you can just have to provide the name of the endpoint and uh, the exact model is gonna run. And behind the scene it's gonna run your model. You have to provide like the, you, you have to uh, plug in the right things. Uh, we're not gonna go into details here, 
probably in the later video but the idea is that you attach your model to this endpoint and this endpoint is kind of serving that so uh, basically then your model is like a way uh, the, uh, a call away from uh, hitting a url uh, with the right parameters so that's it so very easy to deploy uh, a train model you already done uh, quite straightforward i would say uh, possibly later i would include uh, how everything kind of uh, plugs in play with an example but yeah in under 10 minutes i'm just going to cover all this these things the last thing i want to go in this tutorial is the aws marketplace from my perspective it is uh, really a game changer i would say basically now here aws comes in and say oh yeah the this you, you can use the services of aws plus uh, what they are selling is the pre-built models already so you can always go there and see all, all all the products that kind of exist in the marketplace it can be created by anyone and it kind of points out like who, who has created these models and then they kind of ch the, the charges are around the product and, and uh, on the uh, on usage basis so once you use these models uh, there would be a charge involved and definitely you're going to pay by the use but uh, the idea is uh, all these algorithms are at your disposal like as you can see in the example uh, vehicle damage inspection uh, PPE detector for worker safety uh, like face and license plate anonymizer so all, all these models are kind of existing you just need to go there and use it so, yeah I think uh, that's it uh, possibly it was fairly quick but I really wanted to introduce what kind of things exist uh, there are a few more things which I haven't co covered uh, and some of the things I haven't covered in detail but yeah uh, I think probably for a, a, a later video we're gonna cover that that's most of it in terms of this video I hope you guys liked it uh, definitely click on the like button and the subscribe icon uh, feel free to share it with your friends uh, and I think that's it thanks a lot